Let's, uh, let's go. Let's start. Um, you, good music, right? The cla- like the class, the way I look at it is class can suck as long as I have good music, and because uh, you know you start there. Well, oftentimes it does. We have great music, and then once I start talking, it goes downhill. But uh, nonetheless, I'll try to have good tunes. Uh, hey, this is uh, Social 19. There's a lot of seats down in the front, by the way, so feel free to come down. And Social 19. What, what, what do you, let's see, what do you need to know? Yeah, hey, make sure you grab a seat, though. You can't, don't sit in the back. So, uh, it's all good. And I see one, yo, right here, in, yo, in the second row right here. There's a couple really nice seats right there, man. Um, So this is Social 119, so if you're supposed to be in, in this class, then you're in the right place. And I'm Sam. You, you can call I mean, Dr. Richards, Professor Richards, Sam, it's all, it's all good, doesn't matter. Um, normally we start on time and we end, we go all the way to the end, which is at 5.50, but now it's the first day, people are just sort of rolling in. So if you're, if you're a, watching on the stream, you kind of, hey, wait. So um, we're just, we're starting a couple minutes late. Okay, so listen, um, I keep saying that. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Yo, there's lot, there, there are a lot of seats down in the front here, y'all. So just come, you can come down here. All right. Okay, here we go. Well, now we're going to officially start. Um, yo, hang on. So uh, first things first. Uh, here we go. That's the first class. Go to the next one. Hey, here's the deal. No laptops in class. All right. It's just you don't need laptop. You're not taking notes in here. So the be- one of the good, one of the really nice things, I think it's a nice thing about this class, is you don't have to take notes. There's nothing. Yo, it's great, right? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, actually, listen, man. Truth is, you're actually, since you're going to die eventually, and probably sooner, in geologic time, is you're going to die really soon. Uh, you don't have to do anything in here. Like, and you can get... A D, D's earn degrees, C's earn degrees, because, but when you're dead for eternity, it's not going to matter. So just whatever, do whatever you want to do. But uh, here's what you got. You, you can't, you just can't have laptops open because there's no reason to have a laptop open in this class since you're not taking notes. Secondly, as to phones, I used to be like a really, we used to do a lot of phone stuff in here. We used to have really rock a, like a, or we had, you know, what we call, talk about as back channel conversations. And, I, and me, I really like for you all, by the way, if you come in late, there's a lot of seats in the front, okay? So just come on down. Don't ever worry about just standing in front, walking in front of me. It doesn't matter. Uh, so, I really enjoy black back channel conversations because I think it's important for you all. Like this, this look, this is a cl- Oh man, I'm all over the place. Hang on, I'm gonna just keep backing up a little bit. If I was sitting in this class, I'd be nuts. And because I, I would not be able to not talk. So if I, especially if I was sitting near somebody else who, who was a thinker and wanted to have a conversation, I just would never ever be able to not talk because so much happens in here that I'm going to want to opine about and say something like the person next to me, just whatever it is, right? The problem is when you, when lots of people do that, and let's say, you know, you're just, uh, you know, you're sitting with someone and, and like, you know, and and I just go like, uh, um, oh, dude, wait, um, wait, does, does dude, the blonde haired dude need to move? Are you good? 
You're good? Yeah. Camera. Green. You're good? Yeah? Okay. All right. Hey, uh, if I'm sitting next to someone and I just do like, oh, yeah, hey, listen, man. Yeah. Here's, uh, just like that loud, which isn't really loud. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what he just said is a bunch of shit. Like, yeah, whatever. Okay. Uh, uh, the problem is when one of you do, does that, it's okay. But when 50 of you do that, it gets noisy. And then it gets annoying, not to people behind you, because they can't really hear you, but people in front of you. And so it gets noisy in here. And when it gets noisy in here, I, it, it really, down front, it gets loud. Because the sound carries in a way that you can't hear it. And because you think maybe you're the only one who's doing that, but from down here, it's not just you. And then it, it just spirals and it gets out of control. So there's sometimes when things happen that like lots of you are going to just turn to your neighbor and say like, and have a quick conversation. I mean, like a back and forth. That, that's just a given. But I, gotta, I really like to reduce that. And so what that means is we always supported a lot of back channel conversations. I mean, so like on Twitter or on, on, uh, like on Twitch, and, and now, uh, we, you know, because we streamed on Twitch, we're not streaming on Twitch right now, we're only streaming on YouTube for the moment. Um, but, you know, to get, like, chats going, because, you know, things happen, you want to weigh in on it or something, right? And there's not always opportunity for people to talk. So there will be every class, but maybe not for you. However, what I found is that far too many people are just on their phones. I don't know what you're doing on your phones. Yeah, I don't really know. I'm, I'm okay. I'm not militant about this. Like, if, if you really need to pull your phone out and send a quick text message uh, back home f or to whoever, right? Like, hey, meet me after class. Uh, you were going to meet at the hub. Hey, meet me at Thomas. I don't, whatever. I don't know. I have no idea, right? Um, or uh, I'm okay with that. Like, I'm not militant because I dig cell phones. I dig this, this is, this cell phones, bro. This, this thing right here, that, that, this is the most powerful, tiny little thing that in, the, the world has ever invented. Man, this is a computer. You, I can hop on my phone and talk. I have friends all over the world, and we can be talking to them in seconds with video. Like, holy shit, man. Like yeah, uh, dude, ni yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I like that. Can you get that? Yeah. You get this? All right. Are we good? Oh, dude, okay. Like, I'm man. The dude, I got that. You the man. All right. It's all about the mind. All right, so. Okay, so listen. Speaking, right, speaking of naked bodies, right? Like, I... I got to compete with that when you're on your cell phones. Like, you, be, you start watching porn, it's far more interesting than what I'm doing. So, so anyway, so here's the deal. I'm not militant about it, but with no cell phones, right? I'll announce cell phone days. Maybe there's a couple days when we're doing, doing some things. You pull your phone out, do what you want to do. But what I find is that too many people, yeah, you're just not. You're not paying attention. In, in this class, you don't have to take notes. It is not about that. You, because I, I, I'll come back to this in a little bit. I'm going to explain my teaching philosophy and why we do it like this, but you really just don't need it, okay? So, um, so you want to pay attention, and I'm not going to, uh, every class we're going to, well, hang on, I'm going to talk about what, how, we're, how we run the class. So, yeah, get ahead of myself. <laughs> I'm going to introduce Nitty in a second. Wait, I'll introduce you now. This is Nitty. She runs the show up here. Yeah. Hi, I'm Nidhi, uh, and I'm a junior. Tell them where you're from. I'm from India. I'm an international student, and yeah. I love working with Sam. I hope you guys have a great class. <laughs> why do you love... Wait, wait, wait. Why? No, you're not working with me. You're working with the whole team in here. Why do you like it? Um, because I'm a computer science major, and you're wondering what I'm doing in a sociology class. I think that explains it. I just yeah, like love it. being here. I love you guys. Uh, I love this class. So say, yeah, say no more. Right, because look, life is about being well-rounded. Right? right. And so one of the things in a class like this is you, you know, you want you just get an opportunity to 
just think outside the box. So speaking of thinking outside the box, let me, let's go outside the box. That's what I looked like when I first started teaching Social 19 in the fall of 1991. So I uh, was, <laughs> I was a pothead. Uh, <laughs> I, I may or may not still be a pothead. Uh, but, <laughs> okay, damn, you are a li- <laughs> dude. Did you clap to that? Yeah, what about psychedelics? Uh, a psychedelic, okay. Dude, the, yeah, I, so I used to be an atheist, and then when I was 26, I was in the mountains in Mexico, uh, and I went to this area where they do shrooms as part of very much a religious ritual, and shrooms right off the forest floor uh took enough i said i want to i want to take enough shroom they said how many do you want to take this guy i mean these were like shaman and stuff and he said how much do you want to take i said i want to take enough to see god so uh <laughs> so i did and the next morning i was no longer an atheist because <laughs> you can't you can't see the ma- the magic the energy of the life force. You can't experience that. See it, taste it, visualize it, hear it, everything, and, and not connect to it. And once you connect to it, then you're, you're connected for life. I mean, it just is. Uh, so anyway, yeah, psychedelics, dude. But then I only did it one other time because I didn't really have to do it. It's not like that. Once you see God, you don't have to keep going back to God. You just, you meet God, and then you're there. Anyway, um, so... Uh, what do I need to know? So I started teaching this class in 91. Um, it was 150 students, which is about, I don't know, maybe a little smaller than the size of this area. It was in that, that room over in Waring Commons. And, uh, and at the end, uh, as soon as it started, I was like, oh, this is cool. Now, I hadn't studied officially. I hadn't studied in a certain sense. Um, like this topic of, of race and culture and so on, except that I had. So, I, I mean, I, I've lived, and even at the time, I had traveled to many places uh, around the world. I, had, I, I just engaged. I'm just a person who really engages. By now, I've traveled many, I mean, I don't like 50 countries and a lot of countries like five and ten times and whatever, lived abroad for many years. So I, I mean, I live in a different kind of, now I'm in it, you know, very much over the course of my life, lived in a different world. Um, but uh, it was a really interesting class, uh, I, I, and especially for a white guy. And back then I was uh, whiter than I am now. And um, only, only in the sense that, well, actually I'm whiter now uh, in, in the sense that uh, I really kind of under, understand the, in a deep way the nature of kind of what, of what that means and the, you know, the implications of that, although I, I, I would say I, I did a bit then, but it, it's different. It's different. We'll get into this. We'll, we'll talk a lot of, about a lot of things. Um, I uh, wasn't particularly interested. I didn't need to make a lot of money. I didn't need to have a lot of power. I didn't need to have a lot of things. I just really have, have enjoyed teaching. I taught my first class when I was just turned 24, it was a class on cybernetics and human ecology. And I got hired 10 minutes before class started. And I walked, it was a college class. And I walked into the room and I had, there were like 60 students. And I said, uh, hey man. And that, I probably said it just like that. Hey man, uh, anybody know what cybernetics is? And nobody did. And I said, ah, oh, all right, neither do I. Uh, but we'll figure it out. Like, we'll, 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 we'll get there. And at the end of the cement, the end of the quarter, it was 10 weeks. It was really fascinating. Had a, had a great quarter, and I really, in a certain sense, kind of fell in love with teaching, which was also really odd because I'm, I'm actually, in truth, I'm kind of shy in certain groups. For whatever it is, when I get up in front of a large group like this, um, I'm not shy at all. It's like a theater kind of thing, right? When you start, people start acting and singing on stage or whatever. Some of you might be like that and you can bust out in song. But in truth, I'm, I'm actually a little bit shy. So I was struck by the fact that I really enjoyed teaching. But mostly I think I enjoyed teaching. 
I suppose, because I, it's, a, it's an opportunity to, to speak out loud. You teach yourself. You learn about the world. And then, since then, I've really come to realize it's not about me at all. It's actually about learning from you all. Actually, kind of interesting, it just hit me one time. I was, spent some time in a Buddhist uh, monastery, and I had an opportunity to meet the, the, uh, um, the head of the monastery. And, uh, I mean, he's like a, a, like, you know, the Buddhist, like a priest. You know, he'd been there forever, some old dude. And it was crazy. Like I had to, in order to get, he was sitting. So this, well, see, man, may I wish upon you all at some level to have some of the experiences I've had in life. Shit. So there's a big room, right? And he's sitting, he's sitting yo, like Lotus style, like right here. Okay, so, so like this, right? And he's, his eyes are closed and he's just in deep meditation. And I had the opportunity to ask him one question. One question, right? Now, mind you, I'm there all week, so they're building this up. You got an opportunity. They taught me how to enter the room because you got to learn everything. You got to do it right. Like, this is the thing with Buddha, Zen Buddhism in particular. It's so full of, it's to, to you want to achieve freedom and liberation from your thoughts, but to do that, you have to control all your thoughts, which is kind of wild. Anyway, to enter the room, I had to, I had to open the door. I had to, I had to enter it like this. Watch. I had to say a couple prayers and then like, now mind you, I'm walking backwards because I can't walk forward. And I'm thinking, I'm going to run right into this motherfucker, right? So I'm like, <laughs> um, so I had to kind of kind of look back, look back, and I get to the place where I'm supposed to be. I get to, and I turn around. And now, now my job is to sit down in front of him, right? So I sit down and I just sit like this, you know, in this Zen kind of way. And I wait for this guy to let me know that it's time to ask a question. And the way he knows is this, right? Can you just, you got to focus on my face, right? I'm gonna get a nice, so mind you, here he is. He's sitting like this, and he's deep in meditation. And then he does this. And that was it. He opens his eyes, and I'm like, oh, okay, here it is. So I say, listen, man. I, I feel like I'm, I'm supposed to be teaching but, by the way, I've never told anybody this story, this story, this question until right now. So, yeah, not, I don't know why, I just never talked about it. And I said, I'm supposed to be teaching, I'm sure of it, because I enjoy when I'm in the classroom. It's really the only time in my life when life slows down for me. Students appear to enjoy the experience that we, co that we have in the classroom. Um, I still have a job, they still pay me. I don't know why I feel like I'm supposed to do something else. Like, I'm not supposed to, ah. And he looks at me and he says, <laughs> it was just like this. Hang on, zoom, zoom in again. <laughs> okay. This is really hilarious. So he's, open, he's, listen, he's, look, he's looking at me like this, right? I tell him my story. He says, you have to learn how to learn from your students. And I'm like, what the hell is that, right? And I'm like, could you say more? Like, I'm asking him another question. No, won't open his eyes. That's it. And I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, so I get up, and I have to back up like this, and I have to bow, and I have to walk out of the room like this, hoping I'm going to hit the door because I can't take my eyes off him now, right? Before, I could not look at him, and now I got, can't take my eyes off. And I, I get out the door, and I get out the door. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. That was it. Learn how to learn from my students. So it took me a number of years to figure out what he was talking about, but I've since been doing that. And I, and then I really love teaching, and it's utterly fascinating. And so now I'm, this, this class is very much a reflection of that. So I, I really, anyway, so okay, 1991. Uh, all right, here we go. That's me. Um, do you have a question? Yeah, so how do you, like, see the Buddhist? Like, how did you, like, get in with that? How did I, how did I get in there? Uh, well, I just signed up to go to spend a few weeks. I just, I don't know, I called, I signed up to go spend a few weeks, and they, and I did, and they said, okay, like, you're in, and, but I had to do everything, right? I had to really, oh, oh someday I'll tell the, 
the, the lesson, I, another lesson I learned. But yeah, it just did that. Yeah, there are monasteries all over. And, uh, huh, yeah. Okay, so, so listen, so that's me. That's my dad. Uh, my dad was 56 or uh, 50, 57 maybe when I was born. Um, my mom was 45 when I was born. Um, they didn't, I'm, I'm really, I'm not, I'm outside the box, right? Look, they dressed me in pink. Um, pink used to be a masculine color, by the way, which is really interesting. So like here in the West, pink, even in the early part of the 20th century, pink was a, the masculine color. It's a color we use for boys. And then somehow in the mid 20th century, that shifted for girls. But, you know, that was my doll, you know, my little pink jumper with giraffes on. So I was meant to be, at the very least, to bend gender, let's just say. I was meant to bend gender, or they were cool with it. They didn't care. So, uh, and meaning that I, I was just outside the box, and I was always outside the box, even, even, as, a little, even as a little kid. I um, was just always kind of doing my own thing and, and, and enjoying doing my own thing and not following other people. And um, so somehow that, that just has worked for me. I don't know. It worked for me. It works for me in a classroom. Um, but I, I never, once my dad died, um, he was really about science and math and, and so on. Um, and I loved science and math. And, but he, uh, I didn't have anyone to guide me. I mean, I, it was my mom. My mom was working like, you know, three jobs. We were working class. So once she died, or once he died, like, we didn't have money. I mean, you know, it was like, oh, God. Uh, but, it's okay, but it, you know, it's, it's fine. I mean, we have money. We, we, we never didn't eat. But we were working class, and my mom was working three jobs and, like, this sort of thing. And I started working to make money to buy my school clothes at the age of 12. So that kind of stuff, right? But um, I didn't have to take school seriously. I was able to take school at my own pace. And I was an avid reader. I used to love, love, love to read. I would go to the library. My neighbor would take me. I'd come home with a stack of books like this, starting at like age 12, 13, and maybe earlier. And I, and I, would, go, and I would devour the books. And like two weeks later, we'd go back. And I just loved to read. By the time I, so when I was 12, I discovered marijuana. And that took me, that took me in my head at some level. Um, and it, it allowed me to really be, see that thinking is pretty awesome. School sucks, but thinking is really cool. So I never had to get good grades because I didn't have anyone telling me, you got to get a job and you got to do this and you got to do that. You got to make money. My mom, when I was graduating high school, she said, what are you going to do with your life? And I was, I'm a musician. So I was, I, I, to, I was playing rock and roll. I've been playing music, so I, like gigging out since probably the age of 14. And she, I said, I, I think I'll be a musician. I don't really know. And she said, well, the, the, the city, the courthouse is hiring court stenographers. That's the person that sits up in front of the courthouse and types everything that happens word by word. You know, now it's probably recorded, but and because I was really good at typing, and and because uh, it's the one class I did really well in 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 high in high school, and it's like she'd be great. You get a pension, you make a decent salary, and and that was her. She's not saying, "Hey, son, you should be a lawyer or an engineer or a doctor." She's like a court stenographer. That's your level, and but I didn't do that, um, but I never had pressure on me. To, to get grades, to do anything. It was like a complete liberation. So in, in high school, I just did whatever I wanted to do. I would skip class. I'd go down to the library. I'd read books. I'd, it just didn't matter. And then, then when I, I started college, I just went to a, I started at a university that just would have to accept me. I mean, I was playing music and doing stuff from home, but I had to, I, I was, at the only a university that had to accept me. And so then I, you know, just struggled. I mean, I don't know. After two and a half years, I was still about halfway through my freshman year because I would take a bunch of classes and drop them and that kind of stuff, right? Um, but then one day, two and a half years in, one day, I had transferred to a two-year college. I'm like, yeah, this is, I don't know if this is for me. I, I, I don't know, but whatever. Maybe I'll get a two-year degree. But one day, I just, boom, like, something happened. I said, I'm going to actually take thinking seriously. Like, 
I was reading a lot, but I hadn't systematized the way that I think. And I was tired of not being able to really think on my own terms. So I said, I'm going to take school seriously. So I quit everything I was doing, and I became a serious student. My first semester that I was studying, like, eight hours a day now, um, not very difficult classes, I got two Bs and two Cs. And uh, two Bs, two Cs. And I'm like, oh, yeah, all right, I killed it. Uh, and, and then I just slowly worked up from there. Because you have to learn how to get grades, right? Like, it's one thing to be a thinker, but you've got to learn how to get good grades. Like, there are a lot of people who really aren't very smart at all. You, they wouldn't know which end of a screwdriver to use. Um, but they get A's, and I'm like, okay, whatever, right? I don't want to hire you, but, you know, but whatever. Well, not to fix my electricity or whatever, but anyway. Um, so what, what, I, what, I, what I have continued to discover is that f- most people who say they don't like school— what they don't like is formal education. They don't like jumping through the hoops and having to get grades and all that kind of stuff, right? But a lot of people, people like thinking. Thinking. That's the key. Thinking. And people like that. Maybe you don't like it because, dude, I'm going to call you back out in a hot minute, all right? Uh, and that's the difference. And in here, what I like is thinking. You get to think. And, you, you, and you, you're, you're not, you, you don't need to think like I think. I don't want you to think like I think. I, obviously, you, you, you couldn't do that anyway. Because um, you know what I mean? Because you can't be inside somebody's head. And you don't have to memorize nonsensical things. You don't have to whatever. You just have to think. And, and my job is to provoke you into thinking so that every day when you leave this classroom, you're, think, you're wrestling with something. Maybe it's something you agree with, you disagree with, something somebody said, doesn't matter. Maybe it's something that do you think is too, I don't know, like liberal or something you think is too conservative. Doesn't really matter. We'll be all over the place in here. But if I can get, if you, when you leave, you're, you're challenged, to, I don't know, to have an argument with yourself, with somebody else, with me, with someone in class, with a family member. If I can get you to do that, then you're thinking. And that's what, that's, what, that's what school is. That's why we're here, dude. And it's about mindset. And so you prepare yourself in that mindset to think. So th- that's, that's my job. So I see my job as to challenge you, and I see my job as to confuse you. Not to, of course, confuse you, because if you, if you really understood how complex the world is, you would be really, really confused, just like I am. The more I learn about the world, the more confused I am. So that's where I want to be. I want you to be confused. Because at the end of the semester, I want you to have this idea that you don't know anything. And that's a good thing. Because that, when you realize you don't know anything, which is what I think about myself every single day, then you realize then you keep challenging yourself to go learn more and more and more. And the more, the more we learn, the more we think, the better, just the better off. Life is cool. Life is cool like that. So anyway, that's my job. Um, you will, uh, everyone's going to get challenged in here. So we, we talk about race. Half of this is about U.S. issues, and half of this class is international issues. There are students in here from all over the world. Um, we would do lots of international stuff, lots of U.S. Uh, work. There's so many things happening in the world of race and culture, um, and ethnicity, and I'm kind of all over the place ideologically. If you want, it's pretty, it's not very difficult to go online and find critiques of me on the left, which people on the left, progressive, who, who, didn't, who didn't think I was liberal enough, or I was towing the, the party line, or I was doing what, or thought I was offensive about some issue because I, I didn't say something in the way that they thought I should say it, or whatever it is, I have no idea. It's not difficult to find that. It's also not difficult to go on the right and find, you know, where, you know, people like Fox News trying to take me down and that sort of stuff, right? Because I was too, I was a radical liberal who's destroying education uh, or destroying the minds of our young. Dude, beware of that. I'm a radical liberal, man. Destroying the minds of our youth. That would be you all, right? And I'm like, ah, shit, right? So I guess in a certain sense, if it, because we, there's so many videos out there, 
of the class. You can find anything you want to find, or you can see or hear anything you want to hear. So, and what I think is really important in here is that you remember, I, I, first off, I'm, I'm just all over the place ideologically, such that I don't even know where I stand and what I think um, uh, really about anything. You can, um, when you find that something I say or is said in here and I, and I let, I, he let that person say that, I can't believe it. It's like, well, first off, what am I going to say? Do you know what I mean? Like, you're wrong? Like, I, whatever, I don't know. Um, there'll be a couple times maybe in the semester I'll just be like, no, 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 hang on, that's not, <laughs> yeah, that's not. <laughs> but when it's something you disagree with, you got to remember that there's another half of the class at least who agrees with it. And if it's something you agree with, remember there's another half of the class that disagrees with it or whatever it is, 25% or 90% or whatever. And so this is the thing about this class that's, that's really cool is we can put lots of ideas out into the room and, and people, you're going to agree and disagree with certain things. But remember, if you, if you leave here, you know, I've heard people, you know, say like about this class, I was like, oh yeah, that class, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. I don't even know what people say. Uh, I didn't, I didn't learn anything new. Oh, there's one. I didn't learn anything new. I'm like, seriously? That, by the way, that's like the dumbest fucking thing you could ever say <laughs> in a class like this. Like, if you ever hear anyone say that, you have my permission to say, oh, my professor thinks you're an idiot. Uh, but because, not from me, but from you all are going to be up here talking. You're going to talk about your, your, wh wh where you live. You're going to talk about you know, all sorts of things, right? And to think, like, you, you don't learn anything, it's like, that's just like, that's, God, that's painful. I can hardly even hold that thought in my mind. Um, to, you're going to get challenged, and challenge is good, and I will be challenged. I'm challenged every day. My mind is constantly changing and shifting because I'm learning new things and seeing new perspectives, and I'm hearing from you all about these things. Okay, so, uh, hey, can you hang on one second? Then we'll, we won't have their heads in it now. All right, you ready? What, what do we got next? Uh, All right, man. Um, what was I talking? Dude, do you have a question for me? Uh, yeah, how are we going to be graded on that? How are you going to be graded? I'm going to talk about that in a second. Yeah. Do you have a question? Do you have a question, bro? Dude, I know you have a question, man. All right. Yeah. What's your question, man? People try to like cancel you or like put videos of you like yeah t so like how does that go like on like social media and stuff how like in reality i'm being i'm being dead serious like do you you just yeah. speak your mind you just you well, just go thing, first off i don't just speak my mind because i'm i'm very thoughtful about i i i i like first of all, i'm not politically correct in the sense that I didn't, I don't go out and I learn, okay, what's the right language to use and what am I allowed to say and what about this and what about that? And once I, I download all that in my head and then I speak very carefully and cautiously, right? Got it. Yeah. And so I know when to say w white people and European Americans and Caucasian people and this kind of stuff, right? I know what all the letters stand for and LGBTQA sort of stuff, right? I got that. Um, but I also know that because, but I'm in communities. Like, I'm in, right? I'm not just like this, this white dude, this old, uh, old white dude who's not been in this, man. My whole life I'm in it. I'm inside of communities. You got it? So, like, I, 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 don't just, I didn't just learn how to speak on certain things. I know how to be in the community. So, so when it's something like the queer community, right? I'm in the queer community, man. Like, come on. 
I know I can I'm in that world like so I get it and so like um yeah yeah I, I, all over so I don't learn how to be politically correct I just I have a deeply ingrained sensitivity to just how to talk about these things inside a community and outside a community and so when I get when someone tries to cancel me it's usually like it's never because I truly was offensive it's just some thing that one person decides is offensive or two people or whatever and then it just goes and then whatever it is right and it doesn't yeah it doesn't I don't pay attention to it I don't pay attention yeah but yeah yeah, I mean, but you know, you get a guy like with Tucker Carlson came at me hard, man. Like, damn, dude. Like, shit. But I don't care. Who cares about Tucker Carlson, man? <laughs> Fuck. You know what I mean? Um, what language or ideas will you not accept in this class? What language or ideas? Yeah. Well, listen. There were. Well, let me let me go back. Let me just go to this one. This is how I operate, right? I, like queer community, right? Look, I grew up, let me just use this word, right? So I grew up, like, man, you don't say queer. Like, queer is, queer is like, yeah, Yo, you say queer, that's when you, that's a slanderous thing, right? So, like, for a long time, I, yeah, I don't, I don't say, I just, I didn't say queer. And, and, uh, you know, you kind of learn that, and so then I'm in that, right? So, uh, you know, LGB, first it's like LGB or whatever the case is, right? And, and for a while, um, inside the queer community, especially for men, all my friends would drop the F-bomb a lot, right, to each other, right? And like, oh, okay, so for a while, it's like you got to kind of drop the F-bomb to be, to be in the community because that's the nature of the community, right? And I identify, look, I'm straight, but I really am, like, if my wife dies before me, I'll be with a guy, like, so I really be bisexual is fine. Like, I really identi- I identify in that way, right? But I'm married, so like, whatever, right? So listen, <laughs> but... So the idea, but you... So quite a number of years ago, a group of queer students, uh, they're, you know, a couple gay men, lesbian women, a couple bi, you know, maybe somebody who identified as trans or some, who knows. But after class, they were like, listen, man, Hang on, you, you're, you're, you're definitely, you, you, I mean, you're one, you're one of us. Like we got it. Like you, clearly, you're, you're, you get this, right? But um, you gotta stop using the letters, man. Just say queer. Just talk about the queer community. The letters. When you, when you, when you're doing the letters, there's a certain place where you're in, and I mean, you're, you're in part of a community, and it's like, well, if you're part of the LGBT community right? And like, you just know when it's kind of like, you, you just know, I don't know, you know, you know what I, you know, you, you know, you know, <laughs> when somebody's just like, not fully there, they're not fully comfortable. And so they're just like, see, just use queer. It's just, and mind you, I, you know, I have friends who teach in queer studies departments and this sort of thing. So then I'm like, okay, I, I, I queer, but you might use it you, somebody might be sitting up here and use queer, and they might use it, and it's going to fall like a big rock on the floor. It's like, yeah, that didn't, no. That, yeah, you didn't, you, you don't know how to use that word. You're not in it. That's like people who want to drop the N-bomb, right? The N-word, and they're just like, nah, man. You know, like, when someone, you, when, man, here's how it works. Uh, in here, you, I recommend, you, man, you, even, I don't care if you're black, I don't care, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yo, y'all be, you, you, that's a word that I just is like, Dan, I don't use that, man. There's too many people who, I, I don't care who you are, where you are, but you know, but if you want to use it, man, because yeah, I'm from North Philly and I'm just whatever, like, all right, that's cool. I'm not going to say anything, but uh, But there are a few really, really hot button things that I'm just like, nah, don't, don't, yeah, don't do that. But I'm not going to be the one. I don't have to do it because you all, you all are the ones that decide that. And you'll let people know when you can and can't say something, right? And then you got to deal with that. 
I don't have to do that because this is your class. So for me, language and that sort of thing is like pretty much the class monitors itself and people monitor themselves. Yeah. And there may be different things that, yeah, I don't really have to, yeah. It's really fascinating and things change. And what's really interesting is that I, is that I um, change along with it. I mean, don't forget, I'm not just up here away from this. I'm, you know, we've got, I've got like, we have, I don't know, like 180 students working for us as part of World in Conversation and Social 19 and so on. It's like, we're in the, I'm in the middle of this stuff. I'm watching it change. It's like, it's really fascinating. New words, new ways of seeing things. And not just in the U.S., but around the world. And the other side is, yo, man, you do not, there's so many, this is an international class. So you might think like, yeah, I'm down. I got all this and I'm cool. And, I, you know, I know how to talk about this or I have a certain privilege to talk about certain things because I'm black or I'm brown or, or whatever the case is. Yeah, well, you don't have that privilege to talk about other cultures because if I get you up here and I give you a microphone and I say, hey, why don't you talk about China? Chances are really good. You're just going to say some really offensive shit and you don't even know it because it's going to go right over your head. But then someone's going to come and maybe call you out on that. And so that's also what makes this class really cool because like... Uh, it's like, yeah, I got you, man. Oh, so you know all about this stuff. Good. Why don't you talk about Islam to the class? What do you know about Islam? Like, have, how about we'll have that conversation. We'll see how, you, how well you do before you stumble and say something where I'm just going like, oh, shit, that's just offended a lot of people in here, man. Like, oh, dog. <laughs> right? And like... Uh, and you don't even know it. And you're just like talking along like, yeah, 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 it's all good. Yeah, okay. Um, so I, for me, I, hang on, I'm going to come back to this, but I will come back to it. Let me say a couple things about the class and then we got to do some stuff. Okay. Uh, first off, attendance is required. So attendance is not an assignment. You never, ever, ever have to send us something and say, hey, I'm, I'm not going to be in class. Because, like, I don't care if you're not going to be in class. If you're not in class, that means you're not here to sign the attendance sheet. That's how you get your three, three points. Yeah? And, you know, and, and if you miss class, well, hang on. You, so you never have to tell us. It doesn't matter. You, you get points for being in class. You can never, ever miss class and get those points. Because you can't, because you're not here. Unless you take the quiz the after class quiz. So if you're home, you're like, man, I'm like too sick really to be in class. I'm going to watch the stream or I'm, don't, I'm busy. I'm going somewhere else. I'm going to watch a recording of the video. And so, uh, so therefore, I go to Canvas and shortly after class, there's a quiz, lecture attendance quiz. It pops up and then you take that quiz. And that's how you get your three points. It has three questions. You got to get all three questions correct. One point per question. So there's three times in the semester when you can miss class and take the quiz. After that, you can miss four times, but you, then you, you can't take the quiz. So you got to like do that. If you get COVID or if you have like an illness that just goes on and on and on and you got problems, well, then you need to reach out to us and let us know. Okay. Um, those four days, we will not be in class because I'm going to be out of the country. So you will watch you still have to go to class, and going to class will mean you can sit home, fire up your incense, uh, kick back, do whatever you want to do, and watch a classic Social 119 video. And a classic Social 119 video is one of the many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of classes we've had in the past where we've recorded, just like this one's being recorded, and you just sit home and you watch that, and you take a quiz afterwards, and that's how you get your three points. Cool? All right, man. And you don't cheat, because cheating, it's like, why would you cheat? Don't cheat. Dude, you're going to die, man. Why would you cheat? <laughs> Jesus. 
<laughs> I can make a comment. All right, so three days. But here's what you got to do. You have to read the syllabus. And you just have to read the syllabus. There's a syllabus quiz, too. Um, so, next, uh, so live stream. This, that's, that's the link for the live stream. We're live streaming right now. But, you know, the, 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 there's a lag. There's like about a, t well, I don't know. How, hey, Joy, can you come out for a second? Uh, and, um, wait, she probably, she's not going to hear me for like 60, for like 20 seconds. Because <laughs> there's a lag between what happens in here and what shows up on the stream. Um, anyway, uh, so, but, but we do stream class every day. So if you can't make it to class and you want to, hey, is she back there? Can you open it? You know the comments? Joy, 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 what's up? Oh, oh, you're eating. All right. Hey, listen, Matt. I always do. Tell, what's up? tell the class. This is Joy, by the way. All right. Uh, who's been working in this class for how long? Like 20, Too long. 20 years? I've been here for like five years. All right. And Joy. Maybe six. And what do you do? Just so they know. Enough for here. Like, we're in conversation. Wait, oh. you're still eating. You good? Well, I do a lot of things. I just got hired as an administrative assistant, so your girl's on salary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. Is it relevant? Nah, it's probably not relevant. I don't know what to All say. Right. You're here. I, I, I work with numbers. If you guys start doing your dialogues, you might see me in your dialogues. Um, maybe answer some of your emails. I don't know. I'm in a transition state. I'm getting a little less and less involved in Social 19. Which is why I don't really know what to say to y'all. As okay, no, relevant. here I got a question for you. Can you go to the next slide? Volunteers, tell oh. us, tell us about volunteer. Why would you want to volunteer in here? What's well, it entail? Say something about what it entails. I think volunteering, or your case, he'll call them state, case studies. I think they really add to the level of engagement and the, the the way that it makes that this class is dimensional or multidimensional, and you get to be engaged and you actually get to speak from what you know there is no right or wrongs in this space um, because every experience everything you have to add or to share is very real there are people that identify with you whether it's something accurate or inaccurate there's a reason and there are factors in your life that make you associate or believe or understand things for the way that you do and that's what we explore in this class um, it can be intimidating, there are a lot of you, but I don't know, I think we work to make it a safe space and invite anything. Um, so, how, and, and how, like, how about, to tell, to explain the volunteering thing, like what these case studies, like what happens? Um, well, sometimes things are thought out and you might be contacted in advance. I'm not sure if we are still keeping the same system, but um, we are. We using have the same system. Okay, cool. Then somewhere down the line, you'll be informed about going to the Social 119 website, and you could submit a form if you are interested in volunteering. So we have people to contact initially who know who we know are comfortable, um, and you may be selected dependent upon the information and demographics that you fill in on your form that correlate with that lesson. Um, we offer extra credit points when you do that. Or at times, you may be randomly called in class. Um, either way, you will not know what you're talking about, but we try to honor and respect your trust, and Sam try to just do whatever it is that he's trying to do for that lecture, and you just need to be yourself and honest and hey, think say, out loud. Say more about trust, because I think that's, like people have this idea, we live in this world where, you know, you watch television and people are always trying to make gotcha moments. Like, hey, we just show, ah, you're a racist, and we got it on mm -hmm. film, and that kind of, the gotcha stuff, right? Can you say, we don't do that in here? Um, no, we don't do that, but I feel like we are exploring something with education or mm -hmm. um, harboring these kind of critical race relation conversations that comes with um, being online and different platforms and social media in the recordings. So there is a risk that comes with that, but I would say so far, Samuel takes the most heat than I'm the I'm the students. only one, actually. We've never had anybody in class take heat, have we? I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, really, it's oh, not heat. It's like, oh, I'm so sorry. How was that for you? Or weren't you uncomfortable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. 
Yeah, I would say like that's a part of it. Maybe there's a risk. Maybe there is something one of you guys could say that goes viral or whatever. But as far as the time and the space that we're sharing together, instructed with your instructor, Sam, I would say that um, you're in pretty good hands. Um, mm. Yeah, that we're really, yeah. yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree. Like we're really interested in having people come up and we share, like we're, we're often, we're never, we're never even gonna ask your opinion about something. We're gonna say something more like, hey, what do you see? What do mm -hmm. your friends see? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you see back home? Or what do people say or whatever? It's not about, the, the last thing I ever want is for someone to say something that, that like, I don't know, it just is a little bit, off, I don't know, off, not off, off color off, but just kind of like, and then I got to, uh, yeah, smooth it out. And so we, the way we, we ask questions in a way that we're going to get, we, we, would let, we want you to talk about what you know, like what you see. Not what you think, what you see. Like how do people in your community think about hair kind of thing, right? It's like, oh, all right, I can talk about that. It's not, it's not like the risky stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that cool? Yeah. I think it's just pressure, but it's pressure yeah. that you kind of put on yourself or maybe it's not entirely by yourself. Sorry, I'm trying to stay because now I got a lot of ideas in my head. But I think a lot of it has pressure to do with um, how confident you are in yourself, how much do you know yourself. Yeah. I yeah, feel yeah. like the, for the most part, if you're in this class, um, there's an interest in expanding upon things you may have never thought about before. Totally. And so that warrants you to get up here and to speak about things you have never thought about before. Expl explore them together. We explore things together, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have to know a topic. We don't want you to know a topic. In fact, the to whatever topic you write about, oh yeah, I really know a lot about this, we're probably never gonna use you for that topic. Thanks for telling us. We'll make sure we don't use it for that. We wanna, re we're gonna explore together. It's a lot of fun. It's called case studies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool, Sorry. was that it? That was easy, right? Yeah, now just like that. I didn't to... know what the fuck no, you was no, calling no, me on here for. I got you. All right. Okay, thanks, well, man. bye, y'all. Yeah, no. Thanks. 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 <laughs> Good luck, man. I don't know. They'll open it for you. Someone open the door for you. Hey, uh, okay, so look, I got two quick announcements, and then we're going to do our first case study. Um, just a quick thing. If, if you remember... Uh, I, I sent an email out the other day. But first off, you got to read the syllabus. You're on Canvas. Read the syllabus. Um, and then you're going to take a syllabus quiz. you got to read the syllabus. Like, you have to read it. Like, I, I'm not going to talk about how this class works. It's all in the syllabus. Syllabus is like 200 pages long or something. I don't know what it is. Okay. Maybe 10. Yeah, it's, yeah, there, yeah, it's 10 pages long. But C's are in degrees, so don't read it. You're all good. Hey, uh... I need, I need to get someone from Philly next Thursday. I need to get someone from Philly uh, at the airport in the afternoon. I need to get them to State College. So if you know anyone who's coming up here in the late afternoon from Philly, yo, hook me up, man. I might even pay for your gas, all right? Uh, it's a student who's coming. Incidentally, it's the same student who needs, still needs a room. I think we might have it finalized. But if not, if you have a subject like right now, uh, if you know someone who, like, yeah, they need a roommate and they need a woman, yo, talk to me after class, man, all right? Okay, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a case study. And I, like, I would invite two volunteers. Now, the way this operates is you go to the website and you apply to be a case study, meaning you fill out a form, and then you give us permission to do everything that you do, the way you say everything you use, the video. You give us permission to use that in the class for our videos. If something happens in the class, and once in a while this happens, maybe you get up here and you say something. Like this guy, he was talking, and he kind of bad-mouthed a community where he used to live. And he was like, the next day, he, the next class he came back and he said, man, I just real, really feel bad that I said what I said. It wasn't really that bad, but he didn't want people to hear it. He's like, can you cut that out? And we're like, yeah, dude, no problem, man. So it's all good, right? But you apply to volunteer, and then we contact you right before class, a couple hours before class, usually a text message, and say, hey, can you volunteer today? And then you come sit up front, and you're ready to rock and roll and volunteer. 
Okay? So it's a lot of, it's really a lot of fun. So right now, we're going to demonstrate this. So can I, could, could I get two, volu- no, not you, bro. Dude, you will be, <laughs> again, there's going to be a time for you, and there will be a time for you. But maybe somebody in the, no, no, wait, wait, no, you're too easy, too. We'll get, no, a couple, couple volunteers. They're always the first people that raise their hands. They're the people who are going to, like, in a heartbeat. And it's, I don't want to, we'd like a man or a woman. So can we just get two people, and one international and one U.S. So can we, can we have two people? No, hang on. We'll use you guys at some point. Um, no, hang on. Let me, let me hold off. Let me hold off on you, too. Bro, you, are you on? You're on? All right, come down. And then a woman, you're from the U.S., right, bro? Dude, come on up. <laughs> dude. Hey, dude. Dude. Listen, man. How, how, this is why, this is why I make the big bucks, because I looked at that dude, and I'm like, oh, you're from the U.S., aren't you? <laughs> wait, wait, hang on, can you give him a microphone? Oh, somebody else, ideally a woman who's international. Is that, is that you? Okay, all right. Wait, hang on, hang on, hold tight one second. W- wait, because you'll volunteer again. I'd re- it'd be really nice to, I'd, are there any, women of African ancestry who are international. It'd be nice to, to go, I want to, I don't want to, I don't want to set it up like that. Any women of African ancestry who are international? Anybody? Want to, want to jump in? All right, man. I mean, there are, but okay, hey, come on, yeah, come on up. Okay, bro, you can have, have a seat right here. Wait, first off, what's your name? No, you can sit on the table. Yeah. What's your name? In the microphone. Mike. Mike? Dude. Okay. And what's your name? My name's Julie. Wait. Yeah. Hi, my name is Julietta. Juliana? Julietta. Yeah? Ju- yeah. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on, watch this. <laughs> watch this, man. So I remember I said I was a I was a musician, I was a drummer. And any of you who are drummers out there or any musicians at all? I got a lot of hear damage, hearing damage from playing drums. And uh, so I wear this little earpiece that I can now hear you. So what's, say your name again? Julieta. Julieta? Yes. <laughs> D- where are you from? Venezuela. Venezuela? Yes. Are you living here now or did you come up just from Venezuela? Yeah, I'm living here now. You're living here now? Mm-hmm. Okay. So here's what we'd like to do, right? Oh, wait. Wait, I don't have, do I have the gear? Do we have the gear in the back? Yo, we don't have gear back here, right? No. Oh, damn, dog. We didn't. We didn't do that. Wait, is there any? Is there, bro, at the top, man? Is there any gear up there? Is there any like anything up there? Yeah, just whatever. No, there's not. Oh man, dog. Right. Yeah, never mind. All right, man. Well, hold tight one second. Hold tight. I got to regroup. So this happens sometimes. Like, I completely forgot that I was, somebody was supposed to drop something off that I was going to use for this case study. And, uh, and they didn't drop it off. So I got them, like, my head spinning in three different directions. And now we're going to do, do the same thing. We're going to do it differently. Okay. So here's what I want. Here's what would be nice for the two of you. Um, We'll do it. We're, we're going to do this for next class. So we have gear. So we have a hat and we have a tote bag. That with whir- you, Have you ever done whirling conversation here at Penn State for a class? Only once. No? Only once. Once? Yeah. Okay, you did once. Uh, so whirling conversation is a, dial- is a conversation. Can you say what it is, by the way? Um, yeah, so basically I think like someone like put it out top, a top topic and there's like a bunch of people from different classes and we were discussing the topic. Do you remember your topic? Yeah, we started talking about like why people in cities dress differently from people like maybe here in state college PA. Oh yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, awesome. Um so world in conversation, so one nineteen about let me just say like probably 
20, at least 25% of you in here are international students. Um, about 40% to 45, depending on the class, about 40 to 45% of the class are students of color, meaning not white, of European ancestry. Um, and um, it's a really, it's a, in, in world and conversation, as we, we have conversations, bro, with people like all over the world. Okay, so people engaging from lots of different places, okay? And so, um, it really, in some ways, world and conversation is a representation of, the, of, of so many different backgrounds, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what we're going to do next class is I'm going to film a little segment. I was going to film it today, but I don't have the gear, but we'll do it next class. I'm going to film a segment with two volunteers in class who are going to be the models, Okay? And, and what I'd like the two of you to do is pick out the models today. Okay, you got to work together. So you got to pick out two different people um, who are going to model the gear. And it's going to go on social media. It's going to go on so forth. And you can decide maybe you don't want to do it, but we'll work on that. So, what, so given this is, wor this is the world. Right? They're going to they're gonna wear the hat. They're going to put the tote bag over their shoulder, right? <laughs> so they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna demonstrate it. They're going to be that. And so if the two of you can walk around the room and pick together, pick out two people, and it's ideal if it would be a, 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 a man and a woman, who you think really represent the class and world in conversation, both, the, you know, the U.S. and the world and everything. So just go ahead. You can... Walk, you can take the, take the microphone with you and just walk around, get it. You got to like really walk together and just look at people and see what you're looking for. G again, they represent. <laughs> Feel free to walk. Uh, wait, when you see, when one of you sees something, then you got to talk to each other. All right. You could, and by the way, why don't you pick three people that way if one decides they don't want to do it, then we're good to go. Yep. And so uh, for, the, for the rest of you, by the way, we have a new, um, camp, while you all are doing that, go ahead, take your time. You guys are just going, man. You're on your own. Uh, what we have a new, just to see you follow along, follow along, right? Um, a new like camera system in the room so there's cameras on the side there's one in the back there's one up here in front above the door and then we have this this camera and then we'll have another camera hopefully next class and we'll be uh and and but in the future we'll have the opportunity to be able to spin this way so you'll be able to see on the big jumbotron what's happening there bro hang on one second man call it the jumbotron Okay, you got a question, man. You're the question guy. It's more of so like, just like a comment. Yeah, no, it is a question. Comment, all right. Uh, comment. Um, so, like, what do, like, all, like, the photographers in here do? Like, where, you, where do you, like, post, like, the content that you guys capture? You know, the, the uh, well, it goes, it's all on YouTube. The, the video is all on YouTube, right, on our channel. Um, and then we break it up and make, like, shorter videos. Um, but the still photography, yeah, we just do that. So do you try to like monetize on YouTube? No, or, well, uh, we, mm. we do monetize on YouTube. Yeah. So you, you'll, you'll end up watching like an ad or something. The reason we monetize is not so I make money because, but to pay for equipment, man, it takes, like, it takes a lot. Like when we bust a camera or something, it's like, it falls over and I go like, fuck. there's like, two thousand dollars and i'm like yeah this shit okay stuff like that yeah, yeah we monetize you know. how many subs we have about sixty-one thousand now we don't but we don't try to get subs man like we don't try we never we've never ever have we joy have we ever tried like, we don't we don't try it we don't try so whatever man if you want them bots you want to can you hand that back uh, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, wait, we're not done yet, by the way. We, we're still doing class here, so, yo, go ahead, man. Uh, just out of pure curiosity, when you were talking about being in the mountains in Mexico, yeah. was that your first time doing shrooms? It was, <laughs> yeah. Back in high school, a lot of my friend, friends did a lot of LSD, 
but I never did because I was smart. I just said like that can't be good for a young brain, so I didn't want to do any of that. Yeah, it's too much, man. I'm very careful about. By the way, you all should be like those of you who say smoke pot every day. They, that's just not a good idea. Like, how can you smoke pot every day? Like, first off, you're wasting it. Um, <laughs> Because you, you can't get high anymore. This is dumb. Like drinking every day, like don't. Like if you're dealing with addiction, first off, if you smoke pot every day, you can claim like, but I use it for medical purposes. Bullshit, you're a pothead. And so like, <laughs> don't do that. Like it's just not good, right? And drink, it's like drinking every day. Like, come on, man. Like deal with that, too. So you're saying if you just smoke pot, Every single day, you're automatically a pothead compared no, to just. See that? All right, it starts. All right. No, 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 no. No, this is good. No, this is good. This is good. So. Dude, here, let me show you something. Okay. Can you get a close up of that? <laughs> yeah. So I'm a caregiver, meaning like I have person, like I have one person who's 80 years, I, I, can, I can get marijuana and, and deliver it to her. I'm very thoughtful about it. But like, it's like, nah, it's just not something that most people want to do. Yeah, it's just not a good idea. Yeah. But I get a pain in my knee. I'm like, yeah, well, whatever, dude, this is a strong drug, man. You don't want to be doing that. Anyway, that's my thought. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. You guys ready? You got, you got, some, you got three peeps? Okay, we're ready. We got to go. We, gotta, we only got six minutes. You got that guy? All right. Who else do you have? Wait, who's the other person? You know who's, who you are. Who is it? All right. Wait, and her too? Yeah, three's good. All right, you ready? Now. So you all, the three, you can sit on the table here, bro. The three, not the two of you. Two of you come over here. The three of you can sit on the table. All right. So what, why don't you all just maybe just pass the mic down and say your name. Sure. Um, I'm Aditya. You can call me Adi. I'm Amanda. And I'm Sammy. Sammy? Yeah. Cool name, man. All right. So can I, can I ask the two of you, right? What were you considering? It's a global class. Like, what are you looking at? How, why, how'd you get to them? Well, it's a global class, and you mentioned that it was an international, and when you're rattling off percentages, obviously we wanted to cover a variety. We didn't want to, obviously we don't want to pick three people that look exactly the same. It what is an international class. Okay, all right. Hang on, can I ask you? Yeah, like you said, it had to be like representative, so like, I didn't agree on the third one, but like on the first two, yes. Wait, who were the first two? <laughs> it was like the third one, but like you All right. kind of okay. looked so like in case, in case one of them. Wait, what's your name? Sammy. Oh, yeah, you said that already. Okay, and what's your name again? Amanda. Amanda and Adi. Okay, so wait, you didn't agree on her. So let's just set you aside, Sammy aside for a second, right? Mm -hmm. So you had two. And so what were you looking for? Um... Well, basically, like, being kind of different backgrounds. Yeah, go ahead. Different backgrounds? Yeah. Okay. And how'd you pick? So, how, bro, how did you pick a brown guy <laughs> and, two, and two, two white women? A white, I'm going to, you're the same person, right? These two are the same. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no, you're the same. So, you pick, Apple, yeah. Apple no, look at this. Hang shorts. on. Let me put your, and put her hands out. Yeah, we're all, all right, the same. All right. Like, whatever. It's the same person. No, I mean, you, you have white shorts, you have white sneakers. I mean, you got it. Okay, so, no, which is fine. That's fine. Yeah. That's all good, right? By the way, understand, I, I n never, never bring somebody down and, and make fun of somebody. They never do that. And if you think I'm doing that, you're, you're absolutely off base. I never do that, okay? So, Neither you two guys. I'm curious as to how you pick. You have two because you're this. This is really cool, actually. It's pretty cool. You have this one person here and one person here. How'd you get to a brown guy and two <laughs> most like light, fair, fair-haired women? All right, well, as time was kind of on coming around the last bend, like we had pretty much secured uh, Amanda, or it was just yeah, kind of decided at that point. 
kind of walking around, seeing who was looking, who wasn't. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. There were there were a few times where we were like, "You want to do it?" And they're like, "No, no, 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 no." So. Okay, so here, pick just right here, really fast. Just go go pick a few people that, that you didn't pick who would look who would be really different, like, like dude. Them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, hang on, you all stay right there, right? No, just like point out who are some people you could have picked. Her. You, yeah. right? Her. Okay, got it. Wait, hang on. Just stand up really fast. Can you get, can you just grab a couple people? All right, her. What's your name? Annabelle. Annabelle. Who else? Dude, right here. In the, you mean in the hijab? Yeah. Like, literally right behind. Yeah. yeah. Wait, where, 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 are, where are you two from? Are you Saudi? Yeah. How did I guess? Right? Okay, right. So, dude, put it, these two women right here, right, who are both Saudi. What's your name? Uh, Nora. Nora? Yeah. I'm Koki. Koki? Okay, so, okay, so them, who else? Uh, the, the guy in the white right behind them. Oh, yeah, dude, where are you from, bro? Uh, Vietnam. Vietnam? All right, got it. So, okay, but, but how here? Like, you had two, right? You only got two. Mm -hmm. If you pick one of them, that means you can't pick her or you can't pick him. So, like, how, what happened? Well, I mean. People didn't want to come up here. I guess it's. Part of it is who who is open to doing it. You go around and you ask. You say, "Hey, you, you got to come up. You got to model." And everybody's like, "No, no, no, no. I want to do it." Oh, so there were people who said no. Yes, okay. but at the, at the exact same time, hey, there's you can sit, there's you such can a sit down. Thanks, diverse uh, world that we live in. Okay. That when you simplify it down to two, it's you are backgrounds of certain groups of people. But do you, exactly wait, a a Annabelle, right? Dude, Mike, come come up. Actually, come up here a second. Okay, so hang on. Right, so two of you just stand, stand right over here, right? You two, no, Ar 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 Adi, stay, Adi or Adi? Adi, Adi. Adi. okay, so hang on, S sit, sit up here for a second. So hold tight. So now, you like, if you pick her, let's say you pick these two, then you leave these, the, 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 you leave these two out, right? So like, wait, hang on, but you're not representing them. And like, you might say, yeah, well, Penn State's really white, there are far more people at Penn State that look like they do, right? But like, but not in this class. How many white people you see in this class? Like, and you see a lot, but relative to most of your classes, it's kind of less than I expected. A lot less than you expected. Yeah. Is that what, that's what you see? Yeah, because yeah. I, I, there are a lot of black and brown people in here, man. Right. So if we pick, if we pick these two, then you can't pick them. If you just pick these two, then you don't have anybody else. And if you pick the Asian, the guy from Vietnam, or if you pick one of these women from, uh, wait, Saudi, I said, right? Yeah, from Saudi. Then, w what's that mean? Then, you know, wh wh what's your ancestry, by the way? Um, I'm Afro-Latina from Panama. Wait, hang on one second. What is it? I'm Afro-Latina from Panama, but I, I've lived here my, all my life, pretty much. So both your parents are Panamanian? Uh, my mom is, but my dad is from Jamaica, but I didn't really grow up with him. Okay, so Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Panamanian. Okay, so there you go, and even that, like, but wait, hang on. But she's Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Panamanian. So she's not representing Africa. She's not African-American. Even though you grew up here, you are, at, but you're not African-American if we define African-American as people who trace their ancestries to slavery in the United States. You're not African-American, right? Do you identify as Afro-Caribbean or Afro-Panamanian? Primarily Afro-Panamanian. Afro-Panamanian, so not African-American. Or black, do you, hang on. You, do you ever identify as black? Or? I do identify as black. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because it's all the it's all the words, right? It's just cool. It's fun. And how do you? Where are you from, bro? I'm from India, um, yeah. Mumbai. So yeah. And so, I. So. Oh, go ahead. Go I ahead. do identify as Asian, which is kind of frustrating because you know when I got here, it's like choose and um you know you have this certain set definition of Asian over here, right? When I say Asian, what comes to you guys' mind? So right. So the, as simple the as that. The Vietnamese yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so I, you know, for me, whenever anybody asks what ethnicity you are from, I honestly don't know what to say. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So, listen. Hang on. Hold, hold, hold tight one second. Um, actually, uh, thanks, everybody. Yeah. Uh, okay, so don't wait. Just give me, just hold tight. And, and, we're gonna, and, and if each one of you can see Nitty in a second, hang on, let me just say this. We'll, we'll really end on time, but this is an example 
of a kind of a case, the kind of thing we would do as a case study, okay? So you get a sense of where we'll be. There's a lot more that I would like to talk about here, but we didn't. Okay, y'all, we'll see ya.